So we've just woken up to an infestation of what I assume are grain mites. We looked at them under the microscope. They're disgusting. Look, they're absolutely everywhere. Now the only thing I've introduced in this room are new crickets. And I can only assume if it is grain mites, it might have come from them, which means it's probably got into my Mario worms and my mealworm breeding colony. They're even on the side of Diego's tank. They're on a charging thing, which then means I've seen some on this wall. Oh, this is disgusting. So it's a bit loud because the window's open, but we've got the window open, but also the heating on. We're trying to reduce any kind of humidity in here, but also keep it hot. Um, we're still not 100% sure what type of mites these are, but I've sprayed this twice with white vinegar, and you can sort of still see I'm leaving some of it on. But I've also heard that F10 wipes can work well, so I think we might have to pop out and get them. We're also currently bleaching these boxes because they were covered in them. And unfortunately, it's all over the feeder insects boxes. Whether it's over the actual feeder insects, we'll have to go and see. I'm just soaking this oil and white vinegar and I've even found them on my tripod. Like every surface you can think, they're on. So I'm really annoyed because I've had to get rid of my mealworm breeding colony, which I've had for ages. I couldn't necessarily see the mites in them, but they were all over the framework that the drawers go in. And annoyingly, I feel like it's come from these crickets. Um, I also had to get rid of my Mario worms. What I've actually done is just put them all in our like compost heap thing. I didn't want to just kill them all. Um, so at least now they can kind of have some sort of life. I just feel really annoyed about this. Um, I'm not sure what to do with these crickets because you can't really release them, but they could be the main reason we have these mites who knows we did just get back from the reptile shop though i couldn't get any f10 it's two days before christmas everywhere's hectic everywhere's low in stock but we got this it's got very similar ingredients i believe um now it, it won't necessarily it doesn't say it gets rid of mites but it should get rid of anything that they could potentially feast on so let's hope so Basically anything that I can take out of this room and wash we're putting in the bath with bleach and boiling hot water Then I am spraying this stuff everywhere um, And you do have to leave it for a bit and then wipe it off. Oh This is very stressful We've literally had to spray down the wall and if you see my reptile Sorry, you can hear the hoover in the background If you've seen my reptile room tour, you know this paint isn't great and could wash off But this is the lengths we are taking to eradicate this and what's really weird is it seems like they're only on this side and this is where I keep the feeder insects so we're really trying to prevent them moving to the other side of the room because if they are mites that uh, thrive in humid conditions I have two bioactive humid tanks over there so I really don't want that uh, this is what's going on over here <laughs> So I started putting stuff back on the desk and then I started to see the mites again. So I sprayed it down again. And what I think I'm gonna do is keep this really simplistic and spray it every day just to keep on top of it. I have heard that they aren't too difficult to get rid of, but they do lay eggs. And so every few weeks you'll get a load of them. Um, I did also just clean up around here and spray as a preventative. So if any did get over there, they would hopefully uh, get put off. Uh, we have a few things left but yeah I've, I've put a load of stuff in sealed boxes and just gonna keep this like this so it can be easily cleaned so last night I just got this little tray of and I put white vinegar and I made this little bridge out of white vinegar toilet roll <laughs> and there are tons under here accumulated under here so as a trap it's worked well but what is my next move I might have to just get some bleach and water and just dunk the whole thing in. So I ended up filming these crickets explaining what I thought the mites were, where they came from, what I was doing with the crickets and why, but I waffled on so long that I decided I'm going to do a voiceover and get to the point. But first, we've had a second infestation, this time fruit flies. Now I don't think I've ever had a fruit fly infestation before, just a fungus gnat one. You know, the joys of keeping reptiles and bugs, you're gonna get something. Um, now, of course, these came from the fruit beetle colony and what I usually do with flies is hang up a sticky strip. This time around, I decided to try smaller sticky strips. I found this kit on Amazon. They come with like all the different attachments, all different shapes. I hung one above the beetles and one in our kitchen. And after four days, 
they caught nothing. Like, I literally wafted the flies in their general direction, and they caught nothing. So, that was a bit of a waste of money, not gonna lie. I'm gonna keep them hung up, hope for the best. But I ended up just bringing out the big guns. I resorted back to the long, very sticky strips that I usually use. I just, these are a bit annoying because if they touch a wall, that stickiness never leaves. If you touch it, like, they are so sticky. But they tend to work. So if you are gonna use something like this, keep it away from your pets. Um, this is hanging from a shelf way away from the tanks but still in the reptile room. And what I would recommend is that it's in your crested gecko tank. When you go to take out your crested gecko, leave the doors open, waft the flies out, they should go to it. Um, with a beetle tank, when I go to check on them or spread them down, I'll waft the flies out, shut the room door. And hopefully the scent of the strip will attract them and they will get stuck on it. There's also this contraption that people will use to get rid of fruit flies specifically. I've never tried it, but that might be another option. Now, with regards to the mites, I believe these are grain mites and I believe they came from my Morio worms. So quite a few weeks back, I bought some Morio worms and I'd totally forgotten, but basically there wasn't a lot of bedding. I didn't have any earth mix arid spare that I'd usually use to top them up. And I use oats because everyone seems to use oats with no problems. And I stopped using oats ages ago because I'd heard of the risks, but then I'd just see people using them all the time without any problems. So there weren't that many oats in there, but there were some. And I think over time, I don't know if it was like cucumber, courgette, carrots, some, some kind of food I put in for the Mario worms may have dampened the oats, made perfect conditions for the mites to thrive. And each female can lay 800 eggs. <laughs> so no wonder we had so many. Um, so this is why I don't usually use oats. I won't be using oats in the future again. Um, and I'm kind of glad I actually did remove the morrow worms. And also the mealworms because they were just one above each other. Um, now what I've been doing, as you've seen, is either cleaning down with disinfectant or white vinegar or just dipping things in boiling hot water and bleach. Uh, for small things, like I had notepads that had these on, obviously you can't wipe them down, so I've been popping them in a box and putting them in the freezer. So I'm really trying all the temperatures and all the chemicals to get rid of these. Um, and we, I, I still see them here and there, but there's definitely nowhere near as many as there were to begin with. So the last place I thought, okay, where can these mites potentially lay eggs and the eggs survive and possibly thrive would be in the cricket substrate. So um, sometimes these mites will come in feeder insect bedding. So what I've decided to do is remove each cricket, as you could probably tell, put them in this freshly disinfected tub. Uh, we've got paper towel in there, so um, that can easily be changed if it has to be. Um, and we're moving the crickets in the conservatory. So we've also got some new mealworms I bought in the conservatory, wax worms, um, just because these are in cool temperatures. And so hopefully the mites won't survive. And also I didn't want to get new like feeder insects and bring them into a room that could potentially have mites in them. One thing I will say is if you do keep your feeder insects in a cooler area or in like the fridge, um, warm them up before you give them to your geckos. So either warm them up in your hand or whatever you intend on feeding your geckos, place them in a tub, bring them into the warmth because you don't want your gecko being one temperature and the food being so much cooler it's just it wouldn't be natural for them but yeah to conclude we've had two infestations grain mites and fruit flies when you get a pet that eats decaying fruit fruit flies are kind of inevitable when you use oats with feeder insects and maybe the oats get damp maybe the ventilation isn't great then you're setting yourself up for grain mites uh in my 14 years of only leopard geckos i have never had grain mites until now so it's it's quite shocking, um, their eggs can hatch in two weeks. So we're actually currently a week in. So since we had that first bloom, we're a week. Um, so I'm gonna finish up this video, but by the time this video actually goes up, I may have already had another outbreak. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping I've managed to get rid of most things they'd be able to survive in, but we will see. If I find that they're actually thriving in the gecko tanks, then I'm gonna buy some predatory mites to get rid of them. But I'm gonna keep cleaning, keep setting up traps, and avoiding oats. <laughs> so yeah, if you haven't already, please subscribe. 
like each new subscriber obliterates, I think about a hundred mites. I think that's how it works. So obviously you have to subscribe to <laughs> help empty my room. But yeah, thank you for watching guys and goodbye.